Well, actually, it's going, we're going to start in Luke 19. And we're going to read 1 through 10, and then I'm going to turn over on to um, chapter 23, and I'm going to read 39 through 43. Uh, everybody, would let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, we praise you in this place tonight. Lord, we want to get our eyes upon you tonight. We want to make known the mystery of the gospel tonight, Lord. Lord, we want to receive of your hand. Lord, we want to receive the bread from you. We want to receive the manna from you tonight, Lord. And Lord, as I break forth the bread of life, Lord, and to your children, Lord, give me wisdom and knowledge and understanding. That doesn't come from uh, of knowledge of men and, and knowledge of women, but it comes from the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Lord, take the coals from the altar to place them upon my lips that I might speak truth and life to your children tonight. Lord, we pray that every ear would hear, every heart to receive what you have for them tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Jerry, can you turn this down? I'm, I'm blowing my own ears out up here. Okay, in chapter 18, I mean chapter 19, we're going to start there. The name of this sermon is going to be Conversion of the Sinner. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was a little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said unto Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, That he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore unto him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. Now listen to this. I want you all to listen to this part right here, what Jesus said. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house for so much as he also, Zacchaeus, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. This is where I want to talk about the conversion of the sinner. Now, Zacchaeus was a little man, must have been, a, you know, a, a little short stature. He might have been just a man that was short stature, or he maybe he was a midget. I don't know. I'm not quite sure about that. You know, he could have been just short because there's a lot of people that are short, you know. and and and, and the, But then again, it may have been. A little midget because he had to climb up in a tree he couldn't see over the rest of the heads but let me tell you something there's something about Zacchaeus he was uh finding out about Jesus he heard some things about Jesus but not uh, not all, all this that's about happening in this story the things that are about to take place in this story Jesus comes his way Jesus is coming that way. And that's the part I got. He knew exactly which way to go in. And you know he knows exactly where he's going to tread. He knows exactly what streets to go down. He knows exactly whose home to go into. He knows exactly where your children are. He knows exactly where your loved ones are. He knows exactly what's going on in their life. He knows exactly what's in their life and what's been cast out of their life and what's come back into their life. Life. He also knows when they've got lost and they have strayed off, and he knows where to go find them. Well, there was Zacchaeus up in the tree looking down. And, you know, can you imagine what the people must have thought? Oh, Jesus stood over there and said, Zacchaeus, come on down. I won't come to your house today. And you know they all knew he was a sinner. That man's a sinner. That man, uh, I can't believe that Jesus wants to go to his house. You know, they're probably partying over there. They're probably drinking over there. They're probably doing drugs over there. 
what the world does Jesus want to go in that house over there far? Why would that man, a woman, or God want to go over there in that house far? Why does she want to go over into that place? What's the matter with that woman? Why does she want to go in that part of town? Don't she know better than that? Let me tell you, so sometimes Jesus takes you by the neck of the neck, and he takes you down the road sometimes. He'll send you into places that you didn't want to go. He'll send you into places that you didn't know you should go. But Jesus walks in you and I today. And let me tell you something. He's looking for some Zacchaeuses. He knows exactly where that lost sinner is. He knows where they've been. He knows what's going on. He knows who's lost Abraham. Let me tell you something. There's some inheritance out there. There's some loved ones out there. Let me tell you something that's branched down. There's some promises, some grandmas, some grandpas. There's some loved ones down that road. But let me tell you something. Jesus knows where they're at. He'll come their pathway. Because guess what? He'll send some Zacchaeus. He'll send some Zacchaeus because he'll hear something about this going on. He'll send some people that are not afraid of the devil. They're full of the Holy Ghost. They're full of the anointing. God's called them to go into places that we and you and I, maybe I won't even go. Let me tell you something. Because see, I got some things to tell you tonight. I'm not perfect. But let me tell you something. Sometimes I fail and I find myself criticizing other people for going in places that I wouldn't want to go. Well, God didn't call me to go there. But let me went tell you son when he calls me to go there I will go to those places and he's called others to go and we're not to judge we're not to tell them they're not to go because there's a Zacchaeus sitting up in a tree there's a lost loved one there's a lost sinner up there and Jesus is going to his place he found Zacchaeus he went into that place Zacchaeus was up in that tree he said come on down Zacchaeus I see you I know exactly where you're at, and I know you've been searching me. I know that your heart desires to see who I am, that you desire to know who I am. You desire to be with me. I know your heart. I know how far you may be away from me. I know that you may be a rich man, and you may have all that you want. But let me tell you something, Zacchaeus. You don't have me. You don't need have the one that you need more than anything in this world. Oh, Zacchaeus, come down. And before he could even get down, he was already getting salvation when Jesus said come on down Zacchaeus come on down here Zacchaeus he done called his name he just called his name Who? what did he do when he called your name sure come on down Wanda come on down sister love come on down Jerry love come on down come on down Janice come on down Becky come on down Margaret let me tell you something he was calling your name just like Zacchaeus he said come on down for today is the day of salvation for you he come our pathway. He sent someone my way. He sent some people my way. And what was in them? Jesus Christ. Jesus is walking. And you and I. He's living in you and I. He's dwelling in the temple, the temple of the Holy Ghost that dwells in you and I. He sees the lost Zacchaeuses. He sees their lives. He sees how disturbed they are and that their, the riches of this world is not seeming to fit, fulfill their lives, the people in their lives, the loved one in their lives. I'm telling you what, boyfriend, girlfriends won't fulfill your lives, but Jesus Christ will. Let me tell you something, Zacchaeus wasn't fulfilled. He had everything he needed. He he had family. He had children. He might have had a wife and the kids and all that. But let me tell you something. He told Zachary, come on down. I'm coming to your house today. Let them all judge me. Let them all uh, pick on me. But let me tell you something. I'll go where he leaves me. I'll do what he tells me to do. I'll obey God. Now, you don't do any of these things unless Jesus tells you by his spirit. You don't go to the devil's territory unless Jesus definitely tells you to. Now, I will, as a pastor and a shepherd, a shepherd, Jesus Christ living in me telling you this, you don't go unless Jesus tells you to go there. When Jesus tells you to go, you go. But Jesus didn't tell you to go there. You'll be like those other ones that were right down there trying to cast out a demon, and that thing tore, turned on them and tore them up to pieces. Because <sighs> never, they never were told to go do it. <sighs> but when Jesus tells you to go down the streets, Go into places that you thought you'd never go. Let me tell you something. You go. You do what he tells you to do. You be obedient. You be bold. You know that Jesus is on your side. No harm is going to come to you. 
because see, Jesus got some places. He's got some Zacchaeuses. He's got some places that he wants us to go at times. He tells us to go and minister the word of God and preach because see, Jesus walks in you and I and he goes down those places. He goes into the highways and the hedges. He goes and compels them to come in. He didn't say, come and hide in the darkness. Go find you a closet. But let me tell you something. There are some prayer closets and we can get a hold of God and we can start interceding. But there are some people that you don't even know that you're interceding for because see those people might be out there going out there to the streets and they may be going out there to the that Zacchaeus but you're in that prayer closet is interceding back there for that lost one and you're giving that man that strength or that woman that strength that she needs to go do you have no clue what you're praying for that's the reason why it's unknown tongues because we're interceding on their behalf we're doing spiritual warfare we're down here doing spiritual warfare when we're seeking the face of God and we're praying let me tell you something those men of God those women of God they need strength they need anointing in their life they need people that are interceding they need some people on the sidelines that are interceding for them because they're going into those places and they are calling out those Zacchaeus and they're having to go into those places but see they're not coming to partake of their sins they're not going in there to partake of their idols They're not going in there to to gulp down all their their forbidden things. He didn't go in there to do that. He came in there to bring salvation to that house. He came in there to bring deliverance to that house. He didn't go in there so he can go in there and put his arms around all their idols and all their things. Let me tell you something. He tells you better not do those things. Let me tell you something. You're not a child of God. Because you and I, as children of God, we're to take ourselves and we're to humble ourselves. And let me tell you something, Jesus humbled himself and he had to take the criticism. He had to take the, all the judgment from those people. And he said, why do you want to go in there for? Don't you know he's a sinner? Don't you know how they live? Let me tell you something. Sometimes we go and do what we have to do, but you're not to partake of those sins. You go and do what God wants you to do. You bring salvation to the house. You bring deliverance. You bring the word of God. You set free the captive. You break the chains of bondage. And what am I saying? Why Jesus is giving you what he gave you for that hour, for that time. And then you walk away, partake none of that. But let me tell you what Zacchaeus said. He said, this day, Jesus said to him, Oh, Zacchaeus, I love what he said. Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, as he as he came down, it just it's awesome. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. He went and be, became his guest. Oh, they were murmuring and complaining. How many times as Christians we murmur and complain about those that are going to the highways and the hedges when we ought not to. I'm telling you what, I'm under conviction myself up here tonight. I find myself murmuring against those people that are trying to find a lost soul. Let me tell you something. There's a Zacchaeus and God moved on him for some reason. Uh, it might be just one lost soul out of that 99, but let me tell you something. That they'll find that Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore in him fourfold. What's he saying? Because, see, he just realized all this came from you anyway, Jesus. I better give it away now <laughs> because you're going to tell me to anyway. It all belongs to him. It all belongs to Jesus. He already started the best thing about giving. Why? Because, see, he saw that Jesus gave him life eternal. He said, today salvation's come to your home. What did he do? He gave, brought salvation to Zacchaeus. What the least Zacchaeus could do is give him half of everything he had. The least. And we complain if we pay 10%. I don't even preach on tithes or nothing like that. Because, see, I don't preach on what, how much you give because I believe you give whatever God lays on your heart to give. But I'm saying we complain about that, but all we should need to do is thank God that we even have anything to give if it's just a few dollars and not murmur and complain about it. But thank God that we can give it. Thank God. Thank God. Let's turn over and get me another drink here. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answered and rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? 
We indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And what did Jesus say to that man? I mean, he just met these people. He just met Zacchaeus. He, but you know what? What I love about this? He didn't just meet Jack Zacchaeus. He didn't just meet that man. He saw him all the way from the beginning of time. Before they were even born, before they were even in the womb, he knew where they were going to be. And then what did he say? And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. What or has taken place? There was the conversion of a sinner, Zacchaeus. There was a conversion of a sinner hanging on the cross right next to him. And you telling me, my God, my God, my God don't know where we are at. My God don't know where our children are. My God don't know where my brothers and sisters are. My God don't know where that lost loved one is. Let me tell you something. My God knows exactly where they're at. He knew the thief would be standing on the cross beside him. He knew that thief would be hanging right next to him. Let me tell you something. He knew he would be there. And he already knew that he was going to save his soul that very hour. Just like he knew he would save Zacchaeus that very hour. And he came his way. He came his way looking for Zacchaeus. Even though all the crowd was there. I imagine a lot of people got touched. But let me tell you something. He went to his house that day. He went to his house that day. He chose to go over to his house that day. He went and went into the place where men and women tell us not to go. Listen to this. This is what I really love. He even went to the cross. And the one dying on the cross, the thief. Oh, how much he'll go to us. Let me tell you something. I don't care what our loved ones become. I don't care what kind of crises. I don't care if they're thieves. I don't care if they're murderers. I don't care if they're rapists. I don't care if they're harlots. I don't care what kind of occults they get into. I don't care what they get into. But let me tell you something. I want to throw these shoes off right now because I want to dance and shout knowing that my God, he has someone, he has some people that will go and they will find that lost loved one. They will find that lost loved one. They will find the house of Abraham because there's some chosen vessels. There's some lost loved ones. There's a backslider. There's a sinner out there that Jesus already knows his name. He called him from the beginning of time and he's sending you that away. He's sending people down that road and he's coming their way and he's going to come and find that old boy. He's going to come and find that old girl and he's going to come knocking down that wall one day and he's going to say to them, I'm coming to your house today and I'm going to save your whole household. And bring salvation to you and deliverance to your life. Because, see, if it's not about salvation, deliverance, what are we here for? I didn't come to look pretty. I didn't come to see how I can see. Everybody knows I can't sing. That's okay. That's okay. I, or I know I can't. But I do it anyway. And why do I do it? Because I have the joy of the Lord and I love to sing praises into his name. You know, there's some people that like to hear me sing. <laughs> you know, they like that off tune. <laughs> and that's good. But then there's people that love to hear some beautiful music. But let me tell you something. Sometimes it's not a beautiful road that we go down. Sometimes it's not so smooth. Sometimes it's a straight and narrow road. Sometimes it's very straight. Sometimes it's real narrow. Sometimes it's so hard to get down that road sometimes because it seems so straight and narrow. It's about like this this little wall over here between this. Let me tell you something, this straight and narrow road. And he tells me to go down that road. He says, you stay on down that road, girl. You keep going on down that road. You keep preaching the gospel. You keep preaching the truth. You keep telling the truth. You keep giving the word of God out. You keep telling them that Jesus is the only way and there is no other way. There is no other 
door. There's no other shepherd. Let me tell you something. Men and women aren't your shepherds. Jesus Christ is your shepherd and your true shepherd. When man and woman falls, when they go to the grave, who are you following? You can't follow them to the grave. You got to follow Jesus. Jesus Christ and him only. Let me tell you something because he'll never fail you. He'll never go wrong. Let me tell you something. Jesus Christ is that true shepherd. He's the only door and the only way. So here we go. It's not a comfortable. It's uncomfortable. Oh, the streets get dirty. My shoes getting dirty. Heels are hurting. Don't feel so good today. I got a cold. I got sinuses draining. Oh, where's the people at? Lord, he says, I know exactly where they're at. I know exactly who Zacchaeus is. I know where Zacchaeus is, and that's the one I'm looking for. It may be just one, but let me tell you something. Woo! There's a Zacchaeus in every corner. There's a Zacchaeus in the house tonight. He knows where Zacchaeus is tonight. Let me tell you something. You keep going, and when you go down in those places you don't want to go, and it's cold, and it's rainy, and everybody's laughing at you and mocking you, you keep saying, I'm looking for the Zacchaeus that Jesus sent me to. I know there's a Zacchaeus down this road. I know there's a child of Abraham. I know there's an inheritance. I know there's one that can't branched off, but let me tell you something. Jesus knows exactly where Zacchaeus is and he's sending you and I girls he's sending you and I men he knows exactly what we need to do he's going to give you the strength to do exactly what you got to do because see we're not here so we can come in here put some powder on our face you know I'm, I'm kind of like one of those things I want to Lord just set me loose let me throw out these brats, kick off these shoes till they fly back there and hit that wall like they used to. I'm telling you what, I need some more anointing. I need to break free. I need to break free from all the things that the world tries to put us on and tells us, oh, don't go to the streets no more. Don't go out and tell the world no more. Let me tell you something. Jesus is coming back, and we don't have very many days to preach the gospel. Let me tell you something. We better get it out while we can. We better tell our children, our children's children while we can because Jesus Jesus is coming back. He is coming back. He's coming for a righteous few. He's coming for a holy uh, generation. He's not coming for a, a lukewarm and Laodicean church. He's coming for those that fear him, those that want to live for him, those that reverence his precepts and his laws and his commandments, and they walk precept upon precept and not the rules that they want to make up for themselves and follow those precepts, but they follow the precepts of God and they walk a straight and narrow line like I was preaching this morning. They walk that straight line. They're not drunk in the world like that old law man and when he walk, fall, stops them, gives them a ticket and says, you get over there and walk that straight and narrow line. They can't even stand straight because they're sticking their fingers in their eyeballs. Because they're so drunk on the world. Mixing it. Mixing the wine of the world. I preach that this morning. If you want to hear that, you just grab a CD back there. Let me tell you something. If Jerry got them ready. Because I'm going to tell you something. The preachers and the teachers and the ministers of God and his children are getting drunk on the wine of the world. And Jesus is saying, there's some Zacchaeuses out there. Where are my children? Where are the workers? Where are the laborers? They're few. Where are they at? Who will go compel them to come in? Who will go to the highways and the hedges when we are to be falling on our faces and saying, I know some, I know some Zacchaeus. I fell in this area, Lord. I fell. I failed in this area, and I know I ought to be crying out to God for those people that will go out and find a few Zacchaeus, because it might be my child, it might be your daughter, it might be your son, it may be one of our loved ones, and we're th be th saying, oh, I think there's a wonderful thing they're doing, but instead we're sitting back biting them with our mouths, and we're not doing what is right and pleasing before God, when we ought to be crying and getting in the prayer closet and saying, Lord, you're sending my daughter out there, and you're sending them to go find a Zacchaeus put your hands around about them anoint them, give them strength put wings around them, Lord I should lead them to Zacchaeus so they'll come back home to you he gonna wrap this place up and where were we were doing biting them, back biting them putting them down or were we saying Lord help help them Jesus help them Lord 
I'm guilty. I have to repent myself. Thank God I got an advocator with the Father who's just to forgive me of my sins when I fall and I realize I am under the blood of the Lamb. And I say, Lord, change me. Make me more like you. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Purify my thoughts. Renew a right spirit, Lord, inside of me. Make me like you. That I'll think like you and realize that you've got to send some people to find Zacchaeus in that old tree. That you got to send some to find the thief that was on the cross. That you got to find some that was a murderer. That you're going to find them because somebody's got a promise out there. Somebody's got an inheritance out there. They're part of Abraham. They're part of Isaac. They're part of Jacob because God knows their name. He's got them written and he knows exactly where they're at. He knows who's going to serve them all the days of their life. If everybody will listen. Y'all have to bear with me with my throat. I try my best, even though my throat's giving out on me. But let me tell you something, Jesus, he gives me the strength to do what I do when I'm not feeling good. Because, see, girl, girl it's, it's worth it. It's worth every bit of it to draw closer to God. When I hear the Word of God and He's preaching to me, when He's uh, pointing the Word of God out to me and He's convicting me of my sins and He's telling me, Cheryl, you change. Cheryl, you get more like me. You line up and get on this straight line. You better line up and straighten up. You better get off the wine of the world. You better quit thinking like them. You better quit uh, acting like them. You better get on that straight and narrow line. You better walk right, girl. You better walk right. Sister Love, better walk that straight and narrow line. And what am I saying? I better walk in the precepts and laws and commandments of God, and I better obey Him, and I better not covet anything my neighbor has. I better not commit adultery. I better not steal. I better not lie. I better not do all those things. I better continue to abide in God, and I better go where He leads me, and I better love my neighbors. I love myself. I better love, and I better have the love of God. And I need to be in that intercessory closet seeking the face of God. Jerry, if you want to, put a song on. I don't know where Zacchaeus is tonight, but Jesus knows. He knows where Zacchaeus is. And he knows who he may be leading you to. And maybe he's calling each and every one of us, every single one of us in here tonight. I feel he is. I feel like every one of us have a calling in our lives from the Lord that we are to be like Jesus and we are to be compassionate. And if God, we, he doesn't send us to the streets or if he doesn't send us into homes or if he doesn't do those things, but we're to get in that prayer closet, we're to get in that, in that infantry like Jesus tells us, find out what your, what your place is in the army and get in that infantry and get inside that prayer closet and start interceding for those that he does send to the streets. Because see, he's calling some of your children. He's going to call some of your sons and your daughters to go into places that you're going to be fearful for. But let me tell you something. You got to trust God. You got to know that Jesus is on their side. And if Jesus chooses to take them that away, they were doing the calling that God called them to do. Because see, Jesus went all the way to the cross and he died on the cross that we might have salvation. Your children may have to go all the way to went to their death, uh, setting free the lost and looking for the Zacchaeuses. And what kind of soldier were they? You know, when they those soldiers, they come back over there after fighting a war, they give them all these medals and stuff. You know, they're fighting a war. But let me tell you something, they're fighting a spiritual warfare. They're fighting for the lost souls. They're fighting for them. And let me tell you something, there's going to be a reward for them one day. He's going to put some more awards on them. He's going to give them a reward for what they've done for down here. Because see, that soldier, when they get into the army of God, let me tell you something, when he gets on the other side, he'll reward them openly before the, all men. Because, see, they gave all that they had. And they even gave into their lives. And Jesus knows, just like Peter, he wasn't able to go to the cross. But let me tell you something. Peter wanted to. Peter's heart wanted to. He knew he wanted to, but he couldn't do it. But there are going to be people that God calls that will give their lives for God. They will go into places. And there's going to be some people that are looking down. They're going to be up there on the sideline. And they see them in the crowd. 
They see this man or this woman, but they see past this person that's there. They look into the heart of this woman, and they look into this mouth. They hear something coming out of their mouth. They see something in their lives. That What brings them to our place? What brings them into the sinner's camp? What brings them into places that they ought not to be? But let me tell you something. There's this old Zacchaeus over here. There's a backslider. There's a lost loved one. There's one that was went and got away from God, and he's looking down over there. And their hearts quicken. And they come out of that place. And they say, salvation is for you today. See, they may not ever speak a word to them. But it's the fact that they saw them. And Jesus speaks to their heart in the midst of that situation. See, they may not see the people who get saved. Because see, it's not you and I that save the people. It's not you and I that are, are setting people free. It's not you and I that do those things. It's Jesus. So he goes into their hearts and then he, he ministers in their hearts. You may not ever even know. They may not ever come and shake your hand. They may not ever come down and bow on their knee. But let me tell you something. They go back home and they go back and find their church. They go back to mom and daddy or they go back to brothers and sisters and say, oh, I don't know what's going on. But there was some crazy people down there talking about the Lord and he got a hold of my heart. He said, come on down, Zacchaeus. Come back home. And salvation is for you today. I praise God that he does these things for us and our children. And he sends people that way. If you want to be one of those that's interceding on the sideline or those that We'll go and find a Zacchaeus. Or like I said, you don't always go out there. You may be the teacher reaching a Zacchaeus back there. You may be the, the man of God or the woman of God that's reaching them back in the back room or in the prayer closet or through your envelopes or wherever you're at on your job. There's a Zacchaeus there watching you. Because, see, he don't send you there on accident. You're not on that job on accident. You're not in that school on accident. You're not in those places on accident. There's a Zacchaeus watching you, and there's somebody's child. There's somebody's daughter. There's somebody's sisters. There's somebody's loved one. It might be a neighbor that they've been praying to God, get a hold of those people because I live next door to them. And you're the and one that's going to bring Jesus into their life. So everybody would, let's pray. And anybody that wants prayer, have need, need a deliverance in your life, the altars are open. The front's open down here. We've got these steps down here. We've got these front pews. I don't have no altar. I like having space down here because if one, somebody wants to get happy, they can get happy down here. They won't fall out, they can fall out. Let me tell you something. You can get happy in this church. You feel God, you get happy because I get happy. And let me tell you something, but we got some places to kneel right here. We can kneel at any of these places. You can kneel right there. But let me tell you something. If you need more of Jesus tonight and you want more of him and you want some women of God to pray for you, I'd say women and men, but Jerry's the only man here, so it'd be women and man that pray for you tonight. You want to get closer to God? Come on down here. You want more of Jesus? If you need healing in your body, this is the place to come because Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Not sure of love. But Jesus, Jesus is here tonight. Jesus is here to meet our every need if we believe. If we believe. So if there's anybody that wants prayer tonight, if you'd like to come down to the front, I want to pray with you. I want to anoint you with oil. I want to have the other women to come and pray and lay hands and pray the prayer of faith for you, believing for whatever you need tonight. Whatever it might be, sickness in your body, healing for your sickness, healing for your finances, healing for deliverance, healing just for your ministry that you'll go forward and do more for Him and go into the places and give you the boldness and the wisdom that you need. The altars are open. Come on down. Come on down. We'll play him. Okay, for your ministry. Anybody else tonight before we start praying? Anybody else? Okay, I need some women that will pray with us. You going to pray with us or you want me to pray with you, Wanda? Oh. Okay, we're going to do pray for two here. And then we're going to also do that. All right, anybody wants to pray with us, lay on hands, we're going to do it.